2022 draft. Let's talk about it by talking to the number one left-hander in the land in the 2022 class, Jackson Ferris at IMG Academy down in Bradenton, Florida. Jackson, thanks for spending time with us on our show. We really appreciate it. And please give us the very latest at IMG. Yeah, yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Uh, I've been good, just kind of rolling into the season, played three scrimmages so far, getting ready for the first regular season game in a couple weeks. So, I, I want to talk about spike and growth, right? I mean, growing and getting stronger, having the velocity spike. If I'm going to go back to like your freshman year-ish, kind of 18, your you know, low 80s, high 70s, then your mid 80s the following summer, then your 91. That summer that you went to Junior National, which I know was a big summer for you, your 91 pandemic summer, then your 96 last summer. If I'm just going to ask you a simple-minded question, how did you do it? What would you tell me? So to get to 91 miles per hour, it's funny, I never touched a weight at all. So I, I never once got in the weight room to get to 90. And it was honestly like just keeping things as simple as possible, starting all, starting when I was little, working to get mechanics as perfect as I could, and then building arm strength by doing long tossing every other day in the off season and during season. So those two things really helped me. You recently shared with me, and I'd love for you to, to expound upon this, that you got good touch and feel on your changeup in the end of 21 and, and now into 22 by long tossing it a little bit, throwing it at about 90 feet. Explain to all our young pitchers out there how that worked, that your changeup has now joined your top three pitches. Um, so my changeup, like, of course, like, you're not going to throw it as much in high school ball because, like, with velo, you can just blow by a lot of high school kids and throwing a changeup just speeds up their bat. But you always want to work on that every day. So, like, whenever I get out to 90 feet is normally, like, just a light catch play kind of day. I will throw a few fastballs from 90 feet, and then I'll always throw five changeups, making sure I end on two good ones in a row right where I want them to be. And so that's like just working touch and feel with that every day really helps. So so while we're on the touch and feel of pitches, let's let's use our cameras, even though we're remote. I've got my baseball just to show folks I have a baseball. Why don't you introduce your pitches? You and I have done this great conversation on radio on Sirius XM. Let's do it so everyone can see on television. Introduce your pitches to us, the grips that work best, and then kind of tell us the effect you hope they have. So my best pitch would be my fastball, and I'm a predominantly two-seam guy. So I go fingers in between the lace, which is kind of different. Most people go fingers on top. I go in between because I feel like I'm able to get more movement with a two-seam with the same velo as I get with my four-seam which most people don't have. And I'm able to get with my fingers together. I feel like I'm able to rip down on the ball a lot better. And it almost allows for the ball to sink at the last second too. And then my changeup is a two seam changeup with me throwing a two seam fastball, kind of circle change, pinky on the bottom for stabilization. And it's just like my arm naturally pronates. Most arms naturally pronate. So like I don't force pronation anything, just let it come out. You want it to touch your middle finger last. So you want it to like almost come out. And then last thing is your middle finger to come off the ball. And then my curveball, I throw a traditional grip, 12-6 curveball. So you grip the ball on the inside of the horseshoe, thumb on the bottom, touching the lace. And you just come right over top and rip down on the lace. And then I also, last year at IMG, I developed a slider. And that's kind of just like been a work touch and feel pitch for me too. Coming back in after long tossing, throwing it at 60 feet. And I grip it almost just like my curveball, but instead of coming over the top, I just pull down on that lace with my middle finger. I'm intrigued by your curveball. How do you command it? What are things you do, whether it's with your mechanics, whether it's with your release point? What do you tell yourself about that courageous pitch throwing a 12 to 6 curveball? Um, so it took me forever to learn it. Like my pitching coach back home was just like, once you start growing, we'll start implementing a curveball. And it was just kind of like working with it. And I didn't pick up a baseball to throw a curveball at the very beginning. I did softball. You throw a softball. I always had big hands. So I was able to throw a softball with my curveball grip. And then I actually did two baseballs. They were duct taped together. And you could tell the spin was going right if one ball was going after another instead of to the side. So that's how I realized that the spin was going to be right. And whenever I'm on the mound throwing it, it's just kind of like it's a feel. I want to just come out pull it on in that lace as hard as I can but in the bullpen it's kind of adjusting to where like if I'm missing it low in the zone start it a little higher if I'm missing it higher in the zone I want to over exaggerate and almost pull it down as hard as I can to get it to bounce right behind home plate amazing stuff great insights courageous pitch and uh, I look forward to seeing a little bit more throughout this year and then into your college and or pro career by the way we should tell folks 
an old Miss commit. Um, there's no way I do this interview and then say goodbye to you without asking you for your thoughts on the most recent Hall of Fame vote because your guy, Big Poppy's going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yes, sir. That's been me growing up. Whenever I hit, I was always number 34 just for him. He was my favorite guy to watch on the Red Sox whenever he played. So it was awesome. Yeah, excited. You're a Sox fan through and through, yes? Yeah, yes, sir. My dad's from Boston. So if you're not a Sox fan, you don't really get to stay in the house. Oh, okay. I got, I got you. Yeah. So, so when yes, I come sir. visit Mount Airy, North Carolina for the great documentary we'll do on you on draft day, if I tell your dad I'm a Yankees fan, that's it. Yeah, you, you might as well just go out the door. <laughs> so make your agent happy, <laughs> your your advisor, I should say, and your father happy, and be a Red Sox fan. I can do yeah. that. I can do that. Yes, hey, man, best of luck. Thanks for spending time. We always enjoy connecting with you. What a great story of growth and evolution. The sacrifice your parents have made to get you down to IMG. We wish you the best. Yeah, yes, sir. Thanks for having me.